Hey guys, it's Amy and Zoe Beck, and I'm going to do a gush video today. Now, I've not done all these yet. I'm just kind of making this up, but I've decided to do kind of a gush or a rant when it comes to some books, because I think some just deserve their own videos. And this is going to be my first gush, because this is the book that I was, I had the, it was my most anticipated book of the year, and the one I've been waiting for um, for the last couple of years. So, and that was The Witchwood Crown by Tad Williams. And this is the first book in his new series, The Last King of Ostinard. And it follows um, an epic ser epic fantasy series that he wrote um, back in the late 80s, early 90s, um, which was Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn trilogy. The first book was The Dragon Bone Chair. I read this soon after it first came out, and this blew my mind, you know, as a 13, 14 year old. And it was fantastic. And it's still really good. I actually reread this book as well as Stone of Farewell and Two Green Angel Tower last year in anticipation for the new book and new series because I knew it was taking place after these events about 30 years. So these are, um, the first series was, um, you know, an epic um, fantasy that pretty much is the hero's journey for young Simon who, um, Starts out the book as 14 and a kitchen boy in uh, the castle of the High King. And it deals with his adventures of um, evil forces that are trying to take over the kingdom from within and without. And he kind of gets caught up in it due to um, his closeness to um, the um, the local uh, wise man, uh, Dr. Mor Morgies, and also just happenstance and um he just gets he just finds out too much stuff and again goes on his little journey to start with um this was classic i think it is really well done world building um again i have heard people say that it's kind of slow but i guess i didn't feel that way because it was written so well um even when i was younger i understood how good it was and i um, love all the most of the main characters in here were just phenomenal and had their own struggles and I thought it was really well done how everybody was all different levels and all different and again this had it does have uh, trolls and um, they have what he has his version of elves and um, it was very interesting um, his take on all that stuff because I said I, I love seeing different ways of doing things so the, I, I think this is a, a classic series I think this is golden I enjoyed almost you know all of it again there everybody there's always parts where you're like oh i wish that didn't happen to that character but you know i think overall it works all the way to the end as i said i just did a reread so this is really fresh in my mind and i would totally recommend this for anybody who wants to read a fantasy series um you know i think you should have been reading it already but i want to talk about a little bit about the next series so the first series again is when uh, Simon is young, and it happened that, and this is like 30 years later. This this next series, so this is now when he's older, and uh, he, and the, almost there's so many characters that are from this the first book that it's so rich that I would I would recommend reading the first series before you're reading this. I just think it's worth it. Um, but I mean, if you want to jump into this, I I guess you could, but. I don't know. I, I personally think it was much better knowing everything I knew from the first series. And again, I it took some time to reread it for me and maybe a first read would be pretty fast now. I don't know. I just, it was, there's so much in this that I like though, that um, the characters, though they were 30 years older, were those characters that they were when they were younger or when they were in those events. And I, that was so fascinating. There's also a lot of things about characters that disappeared and we find out that disappeared between uh, the last book to Green Angel Tower and to this book. And so we don't know what really happened to them. And some of it we find out near the, you know, there's there's certain mysteries that do get told to us in this book. But it's the first book in a trilogy. So there's only a few things that are really uh, revealed. But uh, they're, but mostly you're, you're still questioning in the first book what's going on. Because this is complete buildup of everything starting to fall apart, which is the best. That's usually how the epic fantasies all go. Um, what, I guess it's hard for me to, exp I don't want to give anything away because I think the first series is so important to read, but this is, as I said, this is a continuation. I think anybody who's read uh, 
um, Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn would love this um, book. This book, again, to me, it was all nostalgia because, again, I read the, the first books many years ago and it was just, it was like revisiting old friends and you were so, you were so happy to meet them, but you were so sad to hear about all the bad things that happened in between or as things were bad happening, you're like feeling bad for them the whole time. And then there's the new characters that you, you know, I didn't know what to expect on those. And it was really interesting to get to know them. A few of them I've really enjoyed that I didn't expect to get the first. I was kind of like, oh, I don't know about that. And I totally bought into it by the end that I'm all invested in their story as well. Um, I think he does, a, Tad Williams does a really good job of um, spacing out the storylines of you get this character for a little while and what's going on with them. And then you see another part of the world them the, them doing this and how it all they kind of connect but again it's too early in the in the trilogy for them to really fully connect but you're starting to see little threads and uh, i just love the way he builds a story that way so anyway i don't know i am gushing here i i don't want to give away the story because um it pretty much is it's from what happens in these books that starts what happens in these books like it doesn't actually, it's not as finished as we thought when we finished the third book to Green Angel Tower from this book. Um, I can, I kind of knew that was going to happen when we did get the uh, book in between. I didn't pull it for myself, but um, the heart, sorry, the heart of what was lost, which was a little novella that um, came out in January. And it was the story between this, like a couple of months after, oh, not this book, but the uh, To Green Angel Tower, um, that series. It was like a, a follow-up from that. And then um, it kind of told a little things and introduced some characters that turned out to be really big into this, which I loved. I thought that was really a great way to kind of cross into it and actually make me like the characters a little bit more in here because I'd read them in that short novel or novella. Um I don't know. I, I'm just, I don't want to gush here. I'm, I just love the way that this wrapped up too as well. So now going into this, I had put uh, a thing on Twitter about this saying, you know, how I loved the way that this, I, when I finished it, I was just blown away because there were so many cliffhangers <laughs> for all the characters because everybody was in jeopardy or in peril by the end, which is great. That's how you're supposed to end a book. <laughs> But it, it hurts because you're like, it's the, it's you, I knew there was two more books coming. So it's not like I'm, and I know that he's writing book number two, um, M Empire of Grass right now. And, um, but the thing is, is that, um, I was like, that's great. All those cliffhangers. And yes, I want to know what happens. And I know I'm not going to know for at least a year. I mean, I'll be lucky if it's a year, but the point is, is that somebody was like, oh, well, that just means I'm not going to worry about it until after all three books are out. And I go, I kind of get that. Like there's a lot of stories that novels that I don't pick up until the series is over. Cause I, I don't like reading them and then, uh, waiting for the next book to come out. I mean, that's just the way it is. You have to wait for the author to finish them before we get them. But this one was just so good. It would hurt me not to have read it already. Like I'm already thinking when the next book comes out, am I going to buy the audiobook to listen to the audiobook right before I read it? Or am I going to actually physically reread it again? Or am I going to buy a paperback copy so I can reread it? I'm, I'm just not sure. Like, I'm already thinking about my reread. And I just finished this two days ago. <laughs> I think that's a great sign of a book that has hit me and that I've really enjoyed and I really want to uh, continue reading. Um, I do want to start finishing series out, like, uh, of the ones I've started and stuff. but. There are some series that I, I do believe that if you buy the first book, at least that shows that there's interest. And I mean, I would really recommend reading the first books before buying more. But also it just, it you know, shows that, hey, I want the whole series. So please keep writing so that they don't just die out. So I don't know. But um, anyway, I don't know what else to say on this. Again, this is my first kind of gush video. Uh, I, I just wanted to get it out. Um, this was a fantastic book, I think. Um, as I said, Tad Williams is one of my favorite writers, um, and um, the uh, Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn series is still like my favorite epic fantasy. And then this is this is really close following now because un until I see what happens later, you know. But I really, really enjoyed this. This book itself was great, and I really enjoyed it. So 
I recommend it to anybody who likes Tad Williams or has read Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn and wants to continue, I would say go and get this. So um, that's it for today. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.